If you're thinking about Cleveland rental properties, this is where you want to be because I'm about to break one down for you in the most transparent way possible. Right? There ain't nobody, nobody out there with the footprint in the Cleveland rental market like Holton Wise. Let's get into it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. And if you're trying to learn about Cleveland, right? If you're an investor in Cleveland, getting into the business, or you're out of town, out of town like my man Abe. Abe, you're from Pennsylvania. You want to invest in Cleveland. This is where you do it, right? Abe, me and you, brother, we've been looking at a lot of different types of deals, right? We were looking at some really low-cost single-family homes, looking at some Burr deals, even looked at some short-term rentals, some Airbnb deals, right? In addition to all that, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure I get you some multifamily, right? Really give you a taste of the whole market, right? Really see what strategy you want to narrow in on, right? And I'm about to break down for you a duplex in a really nice C-grade neighborhood. And I'm going to break this thing down for you in the most honest and transparent way I possibly can. So if you do determine that this is the path you want to take in the Cleveland market, you have all the information possible at your disposal right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's jump into the numbers, right? That's what you're really here for, right? You're you're here for the numbers, the numero unos, this bad boy right here, 3871 West 136 Cleveland 44111, been on the market for 46 days. They have it priced at 1705 or I'm sorry, yeah, 1705 100, 107,500, I don't know what the hell my problem is there, $107,500, okay? I want you guys to put in a bid, full price, okay? Full price for this. This particular area, uh, you know, normally this is like a C-grade neighborhood, but like over by like the 130s over here, like these properties always uh, have incredible high demand and they're always priced uh, a little bit higher than a lot of the other 44111 neighboring properties, but you get a high uh, rental demand over there, right? What we have right here, you're going to see. We got to do a little bit of work to this unit, right? This unit is dated. That dated stuff ain't going to fly, right? This ugly brown carpet, let's get rid of that. Let's repaint it, but more so than that, let's redo this kitchen, right? This kitchen looks like it's right out of the 50s, right? These cabinets, they're probably from like the 1950s, right? These metal, metal bad boys, probably replace those with some Lowe's, Home Depot quality stuff, refinish the hardwoods, make this bathroom look a little bit better, man. We got to get this thing to shine, right? So you also have the third floor, right? Uh, legally... I don't think we can make this a legal uh, triplex. We only have uh, utilities for two. So we're going to make that attached to the upstairs unit, all right? We're going to have a big old upstairs unit, a 4-1, right? So after we fix up that unit, right, we'll be able to get eight fifty a month out of that, right? That's including that third unit, because we're not, or like the third floor, because we're not going to make it a third unit, right? We don't have enough forms of egress uh, to convert it to an actual legal third unit right now. It's not already grandfathered in. Sometimes we'll see these duplexes where the thing's already grandfathered in. We got a lot of those here in the Cleveland market, uh, but you would already have the separate utilities, right? To actually get the separate utilities, we'd have to bring them the project now, and it would not work because, again, uh, we don't actually have the two forms of egress. So we're not going to do any of that. We're going to make it part of the second unit, right? So doing that, we'll be able to get 850 out of that unit. As far as the downstairs go, market rent on that is 750 But it's actually already occupied. This is the thing, too, right? When I do these videos for you guys, 
All right, just a little bit more. Look at the house. By the way, it's all brick, too, which is really, really nice, right? This is a very nice property. Uh, when I do these videos for you guys, oftentimes what we come across is properties are renting for this amount, and then I give you guys the market rent. And typically, the market rent is usually higher. And I know there's skeptical people out there that are like, fuck, man, this guy always says the market rent's higher, man. Maybe he's lying. Well, I, I shoot you straight. That's what I do. I shoot you straight. Okay, check this out. It, it cuts both ways. So that upstairs, we're going to get $850 for that, right? Because we got the second floor and we have the third floor, right? We're going to get $850 for that. And then my market rent for the downstairs is $750, right? Two, one. But the downstairs is actually already occupied by a tenant. And you know what their rent is? They are currently paying uh, $845 right now. They are actually paying $845 for the downstairs, okay? Cuts both ways. To cut it to you straight. $845 is not market rent. For a 2-1 in this neighborhood, 750 is more likely. Why is the current landlord getting 845, right? You got to ask yourself that because, right, every single landlord is going to run things differently. And sometimes you could buck the trend and do something a little bit different and get more than market rent once or twice. Uh, sometimes there's reasons for why it doesn't work. What's going on now is two things. One, the landlord is charging their tenant. Uh, a pet fee, right? 20 bucks. They have a pet. And we do the same thing at Holton Wise. I believe we charge 25 though. So it is oftentimes that if we have somebody, they're going to take a $750 rental, but they got like two cats. Yeah, they'll end up paying 800 right? So there's that, $20 for that. But the other thing is they're charging the tenants 75 uh, It was either their gas or electric. I don't remember, right? It's in the landlord's name, not in the tenant's name. What you need to be aware of if you're considering investing in this property, and don't think of this as like an insane red flag, right? Because you're buying this property. You're buying a tenant base. You're not buying the specific tenant that is in this property. I am telling you this is a really nice C-grade neighborhood in the Cleveland market. I've sold over $200 million worth of stuff. I know this market, right? The one specific tenant that's in there right now is not that relevant to your overall uh, business, so keep that in mind when I tell you this, that is probably a red flag that that tenant might be a fucking asshole. Now, what can happen is some of these tenants, if they go from apartment to apartment and they don't uh, pay their final utility bills, the utility company will flag their name and it's possible that that tenant was not able to actually get service turned onto his name and the mom and pop landlord decided to keep it in their name and charge their tenant, right? So that is... Pretty much, like, I'm, like, 99% sure that's what's happening right now. So, uh, that means your tenant's a fucking asshole, right? That's, you got one tenant in this building that's probably a fucking asshole. This person doesn't pay their bills, right? That is probably something that you need to keep in mind. Now, uh, according to the landlord, they're current with the rent and everything's going okay, but this person does have a track record of not paying their bills, right? So, that's why you're seeing that inflated rent, right? Under normal circumstances, the tenant's going to pay their own gas and electric, not the landlord. Cuts us back down to seven fifty, unless, of course, they have pets, right, which it'll go back up. But I want you guys to be aware that I cut it to you straight, good, bad, or otherwise, right? So with all that said, price point. Still think it's worth $107.5, okay? $107,500. I don't know why it's hard for me to say, but you spend $107,500 total. I want you to also to spend about $20,000 fixing up the second and third floor, right? We got to get that kitchen looking banging, right? And then we'll get the eight fifty out of that bad boy. Probably Section 8, right? Cash is fine, but I really prefer Section 8 when we're in the C-grade neighborhoods. That puts us all in at one twenty-seven and a half. So we're going to be bringing home $1,600 a month market rent technically right now a little bit more. But again, I think that's just a tax because, uh, you know, the current tenant, you know, don't consider that like real money, right? Because, you know, you're paying the utilities and also that tenant might be slightly higher risk than other tenants, right? So keep that in mind. 1600 comes in, 19200 for the year. I anticipate on a normal operating circumstances over the long haul, you'll spend around 10895 leaving you with 8304 You're all in at 127 and a half with your down payment of 26875 plus the 20 k I want you to spend up front to get this thing really banging. You'd be all in cash-wise, 46875 get you a lender for 80 Gs roughly, and this will project out to a 9% cash-on-cash return for the long haul in this neighborhood, man. I really like it. I really think uh, you get a lot of consistent payers over there, right? If any of the C-grade neighborhoods 
uh, are out there where you can lean more on the cash paying tenant base, I would say it's like this little area. It's like four four one is a pretty de four four one 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 is a pretty decent size zip code, and I have rentals scattered all throughout it. But like this little area around the you know the thirty eight the three thousand block in the hundred thirties, like you know like hundred and twenty eight to like a hundred and like fifty. That little area, man, it's it's like really nice. Like we do see a little bit different, like tick and performance over there. So this is very nice. It's got the the brick. You never have to worry about uh, lead paint being painted on the exterior, right? Because Cleveland, they're doing the lead based paint stuff now. Uh, they're getting a little crazy on that shit. So with this, you don't have to worry about wood siding that's been painted with lead based paint up until 1978, right? This is brick. So. All that said, I think it's a solid deal. I think it would make sense for a lot of investors out there who are getting into the Cleveland market. But anytime I sell property to you guys, anytime I present you guys with a deal, I want you to see the good, the bad, otherwise, right? So whether or not the rent is currently low, but I think we can get higher, I'm going to tell you. But likewise, if the rent is high and I think we're going to get lower, I'm going to tell you that too. Because another thing, before I let you go, another thing people do, right, is... They'll sometimes get a tenant to pay above market rate rent if that tenant ha and there might be a tenant who can't rent anywhere else, right? They might have no intention of paying the above market rent rate more than a couple times, right? Doesn't appear to be the case here, but again, this particular tenant it doesn't appear can actually get utilities on in their name, so they don't pay some bills, right? So that's always a risk you're going to run, especially when you're in like C grade neighborhoods. But yeah, you know, it's possible this one is. A little bit higher of a risk than anybody else. But all that said, the property is still worth what they've got it listed for, even though you got to deal with that and put in 20K. Because just properties over in this little area, man, they fly. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.